Welcome back to our Minecraft Let's Play, the Builder's Playthrough. Today we're on episode 12, and we're going to be doing something unbelievable. Today I'm going to be importing two of my favorite worlds I've ever built. What I mean by this is, I've built two amazing villages, and unfortunately they're both on bedrock version. So today the main goal is going to be to convert them both. Using a program called Amulet, we'll be transferring them over to Java, and in the end we're going to import them into our current Java world. There's a lot of steps implemented into this, but I'm going to walk you guys through it and show you how I've done this, as well as let you guys see what I'm doing specifically to make these worlds fit together. This includes lots of terraforming, lots of rebuilding and redetailing certain things that didn't import over well, and overall just blending everything together and make it look like it was actually built in the world. To start off, whether or not this is considered cheating, I don't really care because this world is not meant for any records, and I personally just have this world for my fun and your enjoyment. And by the end of this video, I'm going to have three giant cities and villages in this world that I can be proud of, and I hope you guys stick around to see how they turn out. So without further ado, let's get started. I know I mentioned these worlds were both built on bedrock, but what I didn't mention was that I built them both on my iPhone during COVID. So the first step is going to be to connect our phone to our computer and load these worlds up through Amulet. And since all this has been done, I am able to go ahead and hop into the world, load the chunks, and then we're going to select out the area that we want to import. After selecting the area I want to import, I'm going to stretch out the boxes and make sure we select every detail that we want to get incorporated. After we have this copied, we can hop into our survival world, and I've picked out a location suitable to paste it, so once we get the chunks loaded in this world now, we should be able to paste it. The importance of loading these chunks is just so that we can get a full visualization of where this is going to be. As you can see, I'm messing around with the height variation a lot, and this is just so that we can get the water levels equal. Any of the land that's uneven, I'm going to be terraforming later on, and making it look as connected and naturally generated as possible. Now that we're in the world, I wanted to take a look around, and I noticed everything is covered in shadows and looks a bit weird. It's pretty obvious, but the chunk borders are not lined up, and like I just mentioned, we're going to terraform that all later in the video. A few more things went wrong during the transition, however, it's nothing we couldn't fix. The main things were that the fences didn't line up great, and we could have fixed this with a debug stick, which is a creative-only item, and I didn't really feel like going that far to do this, so the easier solution was to just destroy and replace all of these fences. However, even with the fences fixed, I wanted to come back and fix those shadows, but because it's such a complicated thing, I did some research and we came back to that. The name of this first village is Farmtasia, and honestly, I don't know if I like the name, but I named this back in high school, and I kind of want to keep it for nostalgia's sake. So anyways, now Farmtasia is imported into the world as successfully as possible for the time being. So we're going to go back into our amulet program now, load up the chunks, and select our area that we want to import into our Java world. It loaded successfully, but we need to sleep right away. Now that we've slept, I want to go ahead and take a quick look around the village, and it looks like a lot of these trees don't have leaves on them. That's something we're going to have to come back to, just like with the fences. However, this is going to be a lot of work because we're basically rebuilding a dozen custom trees. So let's go ahead and go back to that lighting issue as it seems to have plagued the second village as well. I saw the solution plastered all over the internet, whether it was Reddit forums or YouTube videos, and the easiest solution was to try optimizing my world. The location of this option is in the world settings on the main menu. So once we have this optimized, we go back in the world to test it out, and it looked pretty good. It fixed all our issues with the lighting, and the only problem left we need to solve is fixing the leaves on the trees. Honestly, building custom trees and terraforming is kind of a hassle, and it's not always the most fun-sounding thing, so I started off with some fun terraforming, where we connect up the chunk borders to the natural terrain. Welcome back in guys, and that just took 12 hours. 
Yeah, terraforming this took 12 hours, and now we have a nice flat area kind of going around, connecting up to the natural landscape. We have a ton of custom cliffs here, a ton of custom edges, and it just looks great. If we look on a map, you can still tell that it was kind of pasted in, but it blends in a lot better, and I love how it turned out. Over here, everything's connected up to the bottom in the water. We had to add in a little wall here and flood a little the area because the water levels were off, as I previously mentioned. But I think it's for the better because this wall looks really nice and I love how it just adds that liveliness to the town. It feels like people are actually living here and there's a reason for it to be here. We need to add something over here in this empty area that the bridge leads to. I'm thinking we do some kind of prismarine castle eventually and maybe, just maybe, we make it like a storage area for guardian stuff. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and clean up all of our shulker boxes and our project stuff here and go ahead and move to the second city. Because yeah, while well, this took 12 hours, we're only halfway done. The last thing we need to do here is take all this bone meal, and I'm going to go around and add grass and trees to the areas that we just terraformed. And in the middle of town, we have these kind of custom areas with all these leaves, fences, spruce trees, and moss and stones. Eventually, I would like to turn the whole area into that and make it look just as pretty, but that's a very long-term project and we're not gonna get that done today. So the bone meal here is just kind of a placeholder and we're just gonna try it on this small patch to see how it looks first. All right, that was a little bit of a white lie. I didn't just do bone meal, but I honestly just grew a ton of trees in the area and made a little bit of a forest. If you haven't noticed, I do have the new 15 year anniversary Minecraft cape, and I'm gonna be collecting everything I can from this release because I honestly am a collector and I wanna have everything available at my fingertips. And I'm really upset that I missed out on the cherry blossom cape because none of the mobs really spoke to me this year so I didn't vote for any. And if you can't tell that really bugs me because I'm mentioning it in a video so far after that happened. Anyways, back to work. Coming back into some terraforming again, I'm working on the second village now. This village has a lot more terraforming to do because we're not just placing blocks but we have to break a ton of blocks as well. That's because I want the second village to be jutting out into the ocean like an island. The issue with this is we have to build all the way down to sea level, which we don't end up doing, but I do build down far enough to make sure it visibly looks like it goes down. In the future we'll come back and add that little detail here, but for now I think it's going to look good as it is. I did a little experimenting with how I did this terraforming. I tried to do some just plain stone on the bottom of the areas to make it look like the water's crashing right up against the stone. On top of this we didn't just destroy a ton of land, but we do still have to place a ton, so that's what we're going to get into next. While I may not be doing every little bit of terraforming in this video, I'm going to get as much done as I can without getting burnt out. Now that we're finally back at the second village, I'm doing a lot of leaf placing because these custom trees have to be rebuilt. I'm not going to show a ton of this because it's pretty boring honestly, but there was a lot of work that went into this and I really hope you guys recognize that these trees look pretty awesome, let's be honest. So if you guys have enjoyed so far and you enjoy these custom trees, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, leave a like, and also follow my Twitch page which is conveniently linked right below. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video so far, I'm gonna keep terraforming and I'll be right back with you guys. Welcome back in everybody, so we did a lot of terraforming just now and the one issue that we're having, what is that? Oh, it's a spider! Hey, buddy! Bye! Anyways, so we did all this terraforming, got this island kind of coming out. As you can see, though, we didn't fully terraform the area. We still have this whole side coming out. Coming out here, this is our little port here, and I don't want to just cut it off, but we're probably going to expand it and terraform out this way in the future. However, the other part of this is that we just have a mountain cut off here. While the plan in my head is to expand it upwards and include a merchant's area, a little castle up top, and just a whole ton of other stuff around here, that may never actually come to happen because I might just leave it how it is. And if that's the case, we'll terraform this eventually. If you guys have enjoyed so far, make sure to comment what you think we should name this city because honestly, I'm at a loss for ideas. I'm not good at naming things. And I think you guys have some pretty good ideas in the community. Speaking of naming things, I need you guys to also comment what we should name this next village I'm about to do. I know I said I'm only gonna import two villages, which we've done now, but I was on my bedrock worlds and I found a third village that I wanna import. It's not nearly as large as these two and it's not nearly as impressive, but I really love it and I really want to involve it in our little Java world. 
We've got our unnamed city right here, which we're chilling in. Then we've got Farmtasia just to the right. And a bit down is where we put this last town in. As you can see, I already terraformed all this area. I'm not going to be getting to this chunk of it either because I might expand it or I might just TNT it. Either way, I don't want to touch it for now. And then if we zoom back out, we go all the way in a straight line back to the city of Havenbrook, which is the city that this world is focused around. While we're taking the time to import all of these cities in the world and expand a ton, I want to go ahead and point out our world spawn is right here next to the coral ocean. Ooh. Finally, I just got my stuff back. We're going to throw the armor on, and that was really unfortunate that we just died there. Now that it's daytime, we should be safe to look at the map again. So as I was saying, our world spawn is right here. We have our four cities that we're looking at. Havenbrook, our unnamed town, Farmtasia, and our unnamed city. Again, I would really love if you guys gave me suggestions for these two names. But yeah, we have our spawn, our four cities, then we have our various mines. If we zoom in all the way here to our Terra Cave, as I've called it, this is where we mine out all our terracotta, which I've been storing up for a big project. Here we have our dirt mine, which is just where I go to mine dirt when I'm in need of it. We have Turtle Island, which honestly, there were just like 50 turtles here, so I decided to name it and bookmark it there. And then we have the Wicked Wonderland, which is our Halloween themed area. I go here every year. So far, that's only been one year, but I plan to go back, and this is where we build Halloween-themed stuff. We built a graveyard, a giant pumpkin patch, and we started building a giant cathedral area. But with that being said, but I'm going to take a quick second and show you guys this terraforming we did in the third city that I just imported on the other side of Farmtasia. Now here's where things got tricky with this third village. I was able to get a very small amount of the water to level itself out, but the rest of the water I would have had to place in by hand, unless I use commands. So here's what I decided. At the end of the video, I'm gonna just show you guys how much I'm sacrificing, and there's gonna be a real creative way that we get rid of these items. But I'm gonna sacrifice a lot of items so that we're able to use the fill command, and we're gonna fill all of those air blocks with water. I'm gonna break all these blocks by hand, but we're gonna fill it with water by using a command. This is the one time I'm ever gonna allow myself to use a command, and like I stated at the start of the video, this world is just for fun. And with that being said, let's go ahead and sacrifice our resources for allowing ourselves to use that fill command. Alright, unfortunately the footage corrupted where I filled this area with water, but as you can see now, it is filled with water. I went through here and blew up the area with TNT to make it look a bit more natural, and unfortunately that was part of the corrupted footage. But we got this area cleared out and filled in with water, and that extends all the way over to here. The only thing we'll have to do is add a little bottom area to this and connect it down to the water level. On top of that, you saw me clearing this area out. It was a big block of grass, so when I did my terraforming, we cleared that out. And I didn't get it on video, but I did fill this area in with water as well. Now we get to the interesting part, though. We have to decide what I want to sacrifice in order to uh, justify using that command and saving us a bunch of time. Now I know it isn't necessary to throw stuff away and get rid of my own items just for using a command, but I want to do it because otherwise I'll feel like I can use that command freely and I don't want that to be what this world turns into. So currently here's our valuables. We have a lot more gold and iron and honestly they're so easy to get I feel like throwing those away just wouldn't really be fair. It wouldn't really be a valuable because we just have such a surplus of it. Aside from our mining resources the netherite and the sponges here's our other valuables and i'm thinking we get rid of two enchanted golden apples one lodestone and one beacon i feel like that would be pretty fair actually in total we used the command three times once for this area once for this area and once over there so i actually don't want to get rid of four items let's just bring it down to three one of each valuable Let's go ahead and throw these back in our ender chest where they're nice and safe with our other valuables. And now we're going to head back to Havenbrook Castle where we're going to make a castle treasury. And that's where we're going to keep these. It's going to make it look richer, but also we're not going to have access to these ever again. In a more real sense, we're not exactly getting rid of them, but we're giving them a purpose other than their intentional use. And I love this because I don't want to get rid of things in this world. Like I mentioned, I feel like that would be just heartbreaking to get rid of items I worked hard for. 
I want to throw some of our micro blocks in to make it look like we're a little richer than we are. So by doing this, we're going to throw in a ton of these ore blocks. And let's go ahead and build a little room for the treasury. All right, we've gathered all our building materials. And now we're going to head down here. If you guys haven't watched the last episode, go check it out. Because we built this whole little area in the form of time lapse. And we do need to add armor to all these armor guys still. But if we go in here, we have a little room that we're going to turn into the treasury in three, two, one. All one. All right, and it's complete. It's not exactly the best looking from the outside here, but also I finished the carpet. It has been incomplete for weeks now as I've worked on this video, but we go in and we've got a very rich room in front of us. Ancient debris, deep slate diamonds, raw gold, lots of normal gold, just a chest. We'll probably fill it at some point and some quote unquote rich paintings like the wither, a creeper head, sushi anyways we have as promised the enchanted golden apple which we will name sacrifice i did not get around to that and then we have a beacon and a lodestone and other than that these micro blocks are just as valuable as the other stuff to me honestly anyways with that being said i think we are at a good spot to end off the episode so i hope you guys did enjoy if you did make sure to leave a like subscribe and follow me on twitch for streams while i do all that terraforming and i'll catch you guys in the next one